Hey guys, a little bit later in the day, working on some cam stuff on this uh, LS3 and the Brian Tooley upgrade kit. So um, I'm gonna show you a couple of things that are different about the kit compared to what you're pulling out and some of the tools needed and uh, some part numbers for you. So um, I'll get these for you here real quick and we'll move on to um, the cam part. So here's the uh, original cam that came out of this uh, 2014 Chevy Caprice. It's a police pursuit vehicle. But um, this is the cam that came out of it. So this is a single bolt in the front cam. And it's got the single bolt, obviously, cam gear and your pickups for your uh, cam position sensor. So what Brian Tooley Racing did is they have that same deal it's the three bolt four pole 58 tooth reluctor wheel and it's a cam gear and this cam gear looks exactly the same the lugs are still in the same spots it's just that they have a three bolt uh, deal that goes in the front kind of like your old school ones and they uh, um, are ARP bolts that they send you so before we install this cam I just wanted to show you um, this in here, these are all the cam bearings. Um, the back is sealed up. I got a light in here so you can see it. But what I found out is that sometimes when you go to remove these cams, they stick and you can't get them out. So, you know, there's a lot of different versions on there. And, um, if you look in there, the third one back is the one that the cam was sticking on. And it was the back of the the very last um, part of the cam that rides in the back bearing back there was hanging up on that third bearing. So what I found out is that sometimes they wear goofy, you know, when they're new and you can't slide them out. Um, there's other things on the internet saying, oh, you gotta pull all the lifters. Well, the lifters were all out. This thing was just like you're seeing right now. I was just basically pulling the cam out of a bare block and it was hanging up. So the problem was is that, you know, you just have to have that thing precise to slide out of there. And and it hung up. You don't want to force it. You don't want to screw those bearings up because then if you do, you're going to be in here either yourself putting new cam bearings in or taking it to somebody to have new cam bearings put in. But the way you want to make sure is that there's a lip on both sides that this cam bearing sits in the middle of and there's oiling holes on both sides and it oils through the passages that are in the block uh, right in here and you can see all the way through there that they're all still lined up and straight and I checked them all with a camera and looked in there and made sure I didn't move any of them but you just got to be cognizant of that when you're pulling out an old cam out of a block if you're going to try and reuse the old cam bearings. All right, guys, here's the cam installation stuff. So in the kit for from Brian Tooley is cam card, how they want you to set it up. It says on here that the installation, they want it dot to dot. So, um, you know, that means that you're lining up your timing dots on like just like old school uh, Chevy stuff. These things come packed in these bags and I don't know if it's, what's around it cosmoline uh, whatever it is it's sticky man gosh dang and uh so gonna have to get that stuff cleaned off of here but here's the new cam you can see the residual stuff on it it's really sticky but i'm gonna get it cleaned up and then i will get some uh of the federal mogul makes a real nice assembly lube for bearings and stuff and We'll get it all lubed up and we'll get it slid in there. Don't be afraid to make a mess with this stuff and be generous. So, you know, it's better to have more on it than what you need than not enough and run a flat cam. So, you know, it is sticky. It, like I said, it's that assembly loop they use on bearings. But I took 
I took uh, three bolts. I have a, a normal handle for old school. Thought it might help, but it, the holes are just slightly off. The handle would sit on here and help you to guide it in. But I found some bolts to do that for today. So we're gonna slide this in and hopefully not have any issues. But seeing as how we are videoing and it is on camera, that's usually when it happens. <laughs> there we go. And just that little bit of an extension right there just helps you to get it slid through there without having uh, any issues in the, uh, the cam hanging up on the bearings. So, all right guys, so here's the thrust plate, retention plate for the camshaft on this. Um, these are the countersunk Torx, they're the T40 Torx bits and they are uh, 11 foot pounds a piece. So um, big jump in, uh, or big drop in foot pounds. Um, they are a Torx bit, but uh, they were also uh, sealed. They had the blue, uh, like Permatex Loctite stuff on them. So um, I purchased some more. This is the Permatex uh, version of that, it's blue. And I put just a dab, just a little bit on each one of those. And that's just to keep them from backing out and then backing into the cam gear and causing all kinds of uh, other issues. So um, just wanted to show you that. And we will start to install here the timing chain and the uh, timing gear on the uh, camshaft. I marked the dot on this one and dot on this one because on the cam card it says dot to dot and the easiest way I've found to put these cams in with the three bolts is you get it on this you find about the same amount of slack on both sides of that chain and you get it slid over that stud and once you do that one if not two of these will line up and what you got to be cognizant of is that once you get these things tight and um, this is all set in place that you need to go back, recheck this stuff, but that as you put in your third bolt, it can tighten one side of this or the other. And so what you're trying to avoid is when you tighten this to the torque spec, your three bolts to the torque spec that you need, that it doesn't turn this and you've got one side that's super tight and the other side that's not, and then your marks don't line up. If you've got Marks lined up and you've got one side that's a little snug and the other side's a little bit loose, that's okay because that's the place of the tensioner. The tensioner will come in to play and it'll sit in here. So that'll this stops the chain slap and the extra and keeps the, the slack out of the chain from skipping teeth. So, um, but once you get these done, uh, or at least one in there and you can get the second one in, then you know that's going to be the best and easiest way to do it sometimes you got to fight it but uh, you need to make sure that <clears throat> you're on top dead center and that your timing marks are up and that they're dot to dot so um, i'll get this going and uh, get back to you so just wanted to give you a little bit of education on these Tensioners, this is the old school tensioner that was in there. Um, sit in there like this. If I can do this without messing it up. This kind of sat in there like that. And then this one around the top gear, obviously the chain went around the bottom. And when these are installed, when you get them from the factory, or not the factory, but if you do a stock replacement, these usually come and these are pushed in. And that little slot has a pin through that goes through that hole right there and that's how you the tension so keeps uh off of the cam gear while you're installing everything so you get everything all lined up you get your chain on there this is all bolted into place and the chain's still loose well then that pin is pulled and this retention that's got a spring in it pops over and the cam or the 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 timing gear rides right here or the timing chain rides right here 
And uh, with that spring in it, that helps keep uh, tension in that. That is because this chain is longer in diameter than what this one is. And then we use this one in place of all this. This sits in here, gets tightened up, and there's very little slack in it. So that's original, and this is the Brian Tooley racing setup.